Okay, so this is the final lecture of this school. Okay, so now then Professor Takahiro will continue his lecture. Okay, please. Okay, so thank you for staying here until this very last talk of this school. Okay, so let me start uh, again the, about the autonomous Maxwell's demo formulations. Okay, so let me first show that the simplest model of Maxwell's demo. So this is a toy model, so this itself is not very interesting, but uh, this is a kind of uh, model of, maybe a kind of abstract model of automatic information processing. So we consider that there is a single site between two particle reservoirs. And the particle goes in from this, uh, left, for example, left reservoir and goes out to this right reservoir. And the left reservoir has a high chemical, chemical potential. It means a high particle density. So if there is no control from outside, uh, then the particle just goes from the left bar, reservoir to the right reservoir. Uh, and we want to introduce Max's demo to this setup. For that purpose, we prepare a wall between the particle site and the reservoir, for example, here. And if we look at the number of particles in this site, and uh, if particles are here, we <coughs> insert the wall uh, to the right side of the uh, particle, then uh, it cannot go back to the, cannot go to the dilute bus. And instead, the particle goes to this left uh, high density bus. And if the particle is absent here, then we insert the wall to the left side, then uh, the particle cannot go into the site from this dense reservoir. So, and instead, uh, the particle can come in from the right dilute reservoir. So this makes it happens to combat the particle from the dilute bus to the dense bus. So th this is a kind of a typical Maxwell's demo setup. And then uh, we want to make it autonomous by without using any external control. So for that purpose, we can make the transition of this wall also autonomous. And uh, for example, if a particle is in this site, then the wall moves to the right side autonomously. And also, if there's no particle here, then the wall moves to the right to the left uh, autonomously. By using this, uh, this uh, implementation, we can make a kind of autonomous particle flow from the dilute reservoir to the dense reservoir. To, and yeah, now we want to analyze this kind of situation by introducing the concept of autonomous information, uh, no, sorry, continuous information flow. So uh, the snapshot which information is not uh, helpful in this situation because yeah, the, everything is changing continuously. So we need to introduce a kind of dynamical quantity that characterizes the information flow from one system to another system. And then uh, uh, what we introduce is so-called information flow. So this is, for example, the information flow of the X system is defined as a partial derivative of the mutual information. So, uh, for example, in this case, so X and Y both uh, evolve in time, but uh, from the bipedal condition, we can decompose time evolution of mutual information to the X side and Y side. And they are given by these partial derivatives. This is X side and this is Y side. And the sum of them is given by the total derivative of the mutual information. And anyway, so the concept of information flow is given by the partial derivative of the mutual information for X and Y. In particular, if the system is in a steady state, in a global steady state, it can be out of equilibrium. But uh, if the time evolution of the 
probability distribution is time independent, then the total Mitchell information change is zero because you know, it's just in a steady state. So in that case, uh, the sum of the information flow terms of x and y is given by zero. So if one of them is positive, the other is automatically negative. For example, if we have a positive information from for y side, then we can say that uh, system Y obtains the information about X because this is a positive information change. On the other hand, in that case, the system X uh, has a negative information flow. And in this case, the subsystem X is regarded as a controlled heat engine by the other Mark system. So this means that if we look at the sign of the information flow, we can distinguish which part is the role of Max's demo and which part is controlled system. So in general, if we have just a complex molecular system in cell, for example, maybe it is hard to distinguish which part is Max's demo and which part is not. But this gives us a, a system, systematic way to determine what is the demand, what is not the demand. So if you look at the sign of the information flow, then the positive part is Max's demand and negative part is some uh, controlled system where the entropy is reduced. Okay, so this is a kind of benefit of the concept of information flow. And also another interesting property of information flow is it gives a generalized second law of thermodynamics in the continuous time picture. So, okay, so again, this is a total entropy production. And we can also define the entropy productions for subsystems X and Y. And for example, each of, uh, for example, the system X entropy production can be negative or system Y's entropy production can be negative. That means that each of uh, subsystems does not satisfy the second law of thermodynamics alone. But if we include the information flow term, then we can recover the generalized second law of thermodynamics. For example, in the system X, it's a X entropy production minus X information flow is always non-negative. So this is a generalized second law of thermodynamics. Actually, this is essentially the same as the same as the, sorry, this, this triangle, triangle picture. So this delta i is nothing but the information flow in the discrete time picture. So if we take the limit, continuous time limit, where this x and this x prime are very close, I mean tau is just given by dt, then we get the concept of information flow. In that sense, this is a prototype of continuous information processing picture, and if we take the continuous time limit of this, we get the second law of thermodynamics for the for this continuous time picture. So actually, so we and the bipartite condition is very crucial here. So bipartite condition means that system X and system Y does not change at the same time. So it means that the dynamics of the total system can be decomposed as can be decomposed as this kind of diagram. So they don't evolve at the same time. So if system Y evolves, then during that X does not change, and then X changes, and during that y, is, y does not change, and yeah, something like this. So we can consider the bipartite Markovian process as a limit of this sequence of triangle diagrams, and the only assumption is that this time interval is very small, that is given by dt. So yeah. This, uh, I, yeah. But they don't have to be alternating, right? You can have two jumps on one side and no jumps on the other side. Exactly right. So this is just a schematic. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So 
I think this is a simple way to understand the bipartite picture uh, in terms of the more discrete, uh, more conventional picture. Yeah, so now we have the second law of thermodynamics for each triangle here, and that is nothing but this, uh, these second rows. So the entropy production of system X is bounded by the information flow of X, and also the same is true for system Y. And also another interesting thing is that the total entropy production can be decomposed to the uh, X part and the Y part, including the uh, mutual information term. So now everything is very consistent. So the total entropy production is decomposed into two parts, and each of them satisfies the general second row. And also that is a continuous time limit of this triangle picture, triangle diagram. So now, I, so now we have the yeah, theoretical framework of the, second, uh, of the information thermodynamics of autonomous bipartite systems. Yeah, so I also, I would not go into detail, but yeah, we can also define the stochastic version of information flow, and we can prove the integral fluctuation theorem by incorporating the stochastic information flow here. It, it's actually not very straightforward, and we need a very complicated uh, definition of the stochastic mutual information flow, but once we introduce this, yeah, we have the same structure as the uh, uh, usual thermodynamics. Both for, that is also true both for the Markov jump process and also Langevin case. <laughs> okay, so now we can push forward this picture to um, analogy with the conventional irreversible thermodynamics. So in the <laughs> conventional case, we have the concept called thermodynamic affinity. That is, for example, the difference of the temperature or difference of the chemical potential. And, and there is also conjugate flow, like the heat flow or particle flow. So now we have a Maxwell's demo here. So what Maxwell's demo is doing is uh, drive the current purely using information. So it's natural to introduce the concept, what we name or Jordan Horowitz and Esposit named uh, information affinity. So that is a kind of information version of temperature gradient or chemical potential gradient. So yeah, the general definition is very complicated. So we restrict ourselves to this four state model. So this y, in this case, Y is uh, max system and X <coughs> is a system. So in this four state model, the information affinity is uh, given by this, so this is still complicated. But the main idea behind this is, is uh, okay, we have four distributions in the steady state, uh, four probabilities in the steady state distribution. And this uh, ratio measures a kind of a bias in the steady state flow. So the, what we call as information is a kind of the bias of probability distribution. And from high density press to low density press or the probability distribution uh, some information flow flows. So now this is here with 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, complete analogy with the conventional reversible thermodynamics and uh, uh, information thermodynamics. Sorry. Yes. yes. Um, what is the form of the conjugate uh, information current? Oh, yeah. I haven't written down. So it, it's a kind of global current around this circle. So, yeah, it's, it's not a particular and so, okay, in general, we have some graph and some uh, probability currents in the graph, and we can make some cyclic decompositions to yeah, the entire graph in terms of some graph theory. So, and for each cycle, we can define the information affinity and the information-driven current. It's a quantity associated with, 
associated with a cycle. So I forget, forgot to write down the explicit formula, but yeah. 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 Is this a steady state quantity uh, or? Yes, this is only for steady state. Yeah, but then, you, then you're, is it, it, but then you're just saying it's literally, it, it's literally the same thing as the, the transition probabilities around the loop minus yeah. over the transition probabilities on the backwards. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's just the usual thing you would write down. Yeah, yeah. This is a kind of usual quantity. Yeah, around the cycle. Yeah, this is a, a function of transition rates and the steady distribution. So yeah, this is not nothing special. <laughs> and so yeah, by introducing this, these quantities, uh, we can rewrite this entropy production term, uh, including information, information flow at the sum of the product of uh, current and affinity. So this is uh, in parallel to the uh, conventional irreversible thermodynamics. Okay, so this is a very general framework. So now next question is how about linear response theory? So this is based on our paper already six years ago. So yeah, so far we have talked about uh, highly irreversible processes, but if we uh, restrict ourselves to a linear response regime, so we can define the Onsaga coefficient. So in standard thermodynamics, the current is expanded as a function of uh, affinities, and th that coefficient is called the Onsaga coefficient. And uh, in, general, in, in general, we have a symmetry or reciprocity of Onsaga matrices. So for example, a typical example is a thermal electricity. So when we induce the electric, uh, the electric field, we have heat current. And if we induce the, some temperature gradient, we have electric current. That cross response are the same. So that, that is uh, the meaning of the Onsaga reciprocity. And that, that's a very standard and yeah, old result in linear response theory. But now our question is, when we consider the information current and the information affinity, the Onsaga reciprocity is still true or not. So this is actually not a trivial problem because the conventional way to derive the Onsaga reciprocity fails uh, in the presence of information current. But by using completely different method, we have proved that the Onsaga reciprocity is still true by incorporating the information affinity and the information current. So yeah, our technique is based on the Schneckenberg network theory. So yeah, this is much more complicated than the ordinary, ordinary, uh, ordinary derivation of the Ronsaga reciprocity. But anyway, the result is the same as the conventional case. So this is yeah, also good because at the level of response matrix, we can treat information thermodynamics in completely parallel way to the conventional thermodynamics. And by using this, so the second law of thermodynamics can be expressed as a, uh, as a property of the Onsaga matrix like this. And one application of this Onsaga reciprocity for information current is the efficiency at maximum power. So there's another context uh, other than information thermodynamics. So this is an important question. How about the universal bound on the efficiency at the maximum power? So in the reversible limit, we need a very long time to operate information, uh, to heat engine. And for example, in the case of the Carnot, Carnot cycle, the efficiency is maximum, but we need closer static limit. That means infinitely long time. So that, that is not practical because to extract the maximum amount of work, we need infinite time. So, so, so the maybe more practical setup is to maximize power. Power is a work per unit time. So if the power is maximized, 
So the, we have the maximum output from the heat engine. So, but of course, if power is finite, the operational time is also finite, then there should be some dissipation and the efficiency is not maximum. So the question is how to maximize the efficiency and the power at the same time. So that is a conventional and long standing question and there are many, many works and the some dynamic uncertainty relation is also a very important result in this context. But a similar result is given by, for example, Curzon and Arbon in 1975. Well, in the linear response regime, Christian van den Broek uh, proved a very universal property of uh, the efficiency at the maximum power. So <laughs> it, it basically it said that uh, the efficiency at the maximum power is a half of the perfect eff maximum efficiency. So if we maximize the power instead of the efficiency itself, then the efficiency becomes half of the maximum of it. So th that is a that is always true in the linear response regime. And it is, um, yeah, the proof is not difficult and it is based on the Onsaga reciprocity. So now we have the Onsaga reciprocity for information engines. So we can apply the same technique to derive the efficiency at maximum power in the presence of Max's demo and the information flow. So that was done in this paper. And now the Efficiency is defined as the ratio of the power output and the information flow. So this is exactly the same as the definition of information efficiency that I defined yesterday. And also, yeah, general second law said that the efficiency is uh, not greater than one. Then <laughs> we can prove that the, if we maximize the power, then the efficiency should be less than one half. So this is the same result as the conventional case without information. But, uh, but uh, once we have the on server reciprocity, so we have the same, we can prove, we can use the same technique for the proof of this. So this is the application of the on server reciprocity for information heat engines. Okay, so some questions so far. Yeah. For example, the solar engine is one of the maximum power working engine. Yeah, it's a maximum efficiency heat engine. Yeah, not the power. Uh, in this case, it's in steady state. In steady? Yeah. No equilibrium steady state. Uh, so efficiency in so you, in that case, how we can define the world? Uh, I, I'm not. Oh, you mean, uh, work is? Uh, work is given by this. Uh, this is a power, actually. So there is a, for example, we can imagine that F is a electric field and J is a electric current. Then the electric field multiplied by electric current is just just the power of of that yeah situation. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so far I have introduced information flow approach. And I will very briefly mention also that other transfer entropy approach. So, the yeah, benefit of this approach is for non Markovian dynamics, but I, I think I don't have time to. Uh, going into the details of non Markovian general dynamics. So, today I will focus on just a uh, weak version for Markovian process. 
Okay, so the transfer entropy itself is a very common concept uh, introduced by Schrieffer in 2000. It is frequently used for time series analysis. And actually it was originally, very originally introduced in maybe 1950s or, yeah. So it, it, it is known as Granger causality and it won the Nobel Prize for Economy. So it, it's a very common concept in time series analysis. But in our context, the definition is uh, given by this. So what we want to quantify is the information obtained by why this is Max's demo in this infinitesimal time step. And again, in this case, the snapshot mutual information is not useful because uh, yeah, we have constant, <coughs> constant correlation in continuous time dynamics. So we need to uh, some conditioning after the past trajectory of the max is them. So for example, in this case, in this simple case, we consider the mutual information between x, x of time t, and y of time t plus dt under the condition of y of t. So this y of t is a, some conditioning. So this mutual information means that uh, y, system y gets some new information about x during this time step dt in addition to yt. So this is a, uh, this conditional mutual information is nothing but the transfer entropy in this setup. And we normalize it by divided by uh, dt. And um, yeah, and this is by definition positive. And this is our, also a useful quantifier of, of the continuous information flow. Okay, now, so, also I will skip the details. So, but yeah, we can also show that fluctuation theorem and, uh, yeah, second row of thermodynamics by incorporating the transfer entropy. And, yeah, and we have applied this kind of formulation to biological chemotaxis uh, in our 2015 paper. But, yeah, I think I will skip the details about this. And in, in the context of this lecture, so it is interesting to see that there is an inequality between the information flow and the transfer entropy. The transfer entropy is always, always greater than the information flow. And the equality is achieved if the measurement about x by y is called a sufficient statistics. I, I would explain it in the next slide. But anyway, in such a special case, uh, the information flow and the transfer entropy are the same. So, so we can adapt the ratio of the transfer entropy and the information flow as a kind of as a measure of the perfectness of measurement. So um, yeah, it, it was named as sensory capacity by Udo Seifert group. But, but anyway, so we can use this as a, a kind of the effectiveness of the measurement. So now we focus on the concept of sufficient statistics. So yeah, in, in a very simple setup. So for example, we consider the coin toss and we have head or tail. Then what we want to know is the probability estimation. I mean, probability of the head is given by theta and uh, we want to estimate this theta. And our information is the number, uh, our information is a sequence of head and tail. For example, we got some results like head, head, tail, head, tail, tail, tail. So, but to get the information about the probability theta, we don't need the entire information about the sequence, but only the ratio of H and T is relevant. And if only we know the ratio of the numbers of head and tail, we can make the best estimation about theta. So in this case, the ratio of the number of numbers of head and tail is called the sufficient statistics. So the full again, the full information is the perfect information about the sequence, but we don't need that in this case. And just that ratio of the numbers is important. So th this is a basic idea of sufficient statistics. And now in our context, 
uh, the sensor capacity is <coughs> given by one. That means the information flow and the transfer entropy are the same. When uh, the when this this y capacity is a sufficient statistics. So that means that we don't need the past information, uh, yt or something like that, to guess the uh, current status of uh, systems x. So this is uh, the condition that the sensory capacity takes a maximum value. Especially in the case of the Kalman filter, it's a kind of a yeah, base estimator of time series. So in the case of the Kalman filter, it, the sensory capacity make, takes the maximum value. And the, it is known that Kalman filter is a, a sufficient statistics in a time series estimation. So, so by using these two different information measures, information flow and uh, transfer entropy, we can get the property of the estimation in terms of uh, sufficient statistics. Yeah, also, you can find a uh, very detailed calibration of karma filter uh, in this context, in this uh, paper by Horowitz and Sandberg in 2014. Okay, so, oh, it's, it's very early, sorry. So this is the final slide. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, I have talked about the uh, general theoretical framework of some dynamics of information, but by focusing only on the classical situations. So, and yeah, I have talked about experimental demonstration, and today I have talked about the measurement and region and products of max system, and finally, continuous and autonomous max system. But here's my review paper, it's seven years ago. And of course, we have a very long list of literature, but I will, I'll skip that. And okay, so maybe I would take questions or if, yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so it's time for question. I was very impressed the concept of sensory capacity. Yeah. So uh, actually I have uh, several questions, but uh, the first thing is uh, I wonder, is it possible to, uh, of course it is a defined, me defined quantity, so theoretically we could uh, measure the quantity in our model, but I wonder, in the biological system, in empirical system, is it possible uh, to catch up the uh, sensory capacity? Yeah, actually, in this paper, we have calculated the sensory capacity for the chemotaxis model and compared it to the real parameter region obtained by experiments. So we found that the sensory capacity of real chemotaxis process is not, not very bad. Yeah, it, it's not completely the maximum, but yeah, it's, it, it, yeah. Sorry, I don't have the figure now, but it's, it's good, yeah. So yeah, it, I, I think if we, once we are given some, uh, some uh, theoretical model, like Langevin model, so we can compute this sensory capacity for some biological processes. Yeah. Okay, I have second question, and I'd like to, this is one is last question. My second question is, uh, for example, uh, if the demon, uh, so you said demon and system sometimes interchangeable, so, but yeah. still, if, uh, I wonder that, uh, so 
it is a consideration of uh, maximally storage of the demon. I mean, the demon sometimes finest size of the memory effect. Yeah. So if we consider the finest size of the memory, then uh, still, so my question is that uh, if the memory, finite size memory filled, filled up, so there is no remaining memory enough, then it is possible to uh, inhibit the flow of the information because of the re small remaining part. So in this case, we could say uh, sensory capacity is not enough to... Uh, yeah. In general, the s state of the memory is updated every time step. So we, yeah, uh, we don't imagine, usually we don't imagine that there are many memories. But there's a single memory, for example, memory molecule, and its state is updated in every time step. So, so even in that situation, if uh, this plays as a role of karma filter, then it, it becomes a sufficient statistics. So that's, that is a very unique feature of karma filter. So we don't need to store the every past sequence in the memory device, but we can update it in every time step. But we still have the perfect information. So that, that, is, a, yeah, that is possible only by using Bayes' estimator or the karma, FC, karma estimator. Yeah. OK, thank you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this guy, first author Matsumoto, is, was a PhD student of my group, but he's now a YouTuber, so <laughs> yeah, he, he has, yeah, yeah I, I think million, yeah, his channel has a million audience, so it, he's a very famous YouTuber in Japan, so he, he yeah, he has some, some, yeah, show, show for, about a scientific show or something like that, some educational, yeah. Think so, yeah. Exactly right, yeah. That, that's that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got much money more than me. So. <laughs> yes. When C is equal to one, yeah. then can you say that the information contains the sufficient statistics? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So in that case, the yes. the yeah latest outcome has the yeah. perfect information about the past. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see some explicit calculation in this Horowitz sandbox paper. Uh, thank you for the lecture, and I'm, I find the dynamical concept of information flow are very interesting. But uh, as far as I know, the calculating information theory concepts are kind of require large calculations. So or is there any way to efficiently estimate the information theory quantities? In large systems. By numerics. Yeah. Numerical. Yeah. That, that's a very important problem. So, yeah, there are several algorithms. I'm not an expert of numerical calculation, but there are several algorithms. But, yeah, usually it's very heavy. Yeah, that calculating channel information is not very heavy. But if we incorporate some time sequence, like information flow or transfer entropy, typically it becomes very heavy to get the exact value numerically. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, 
in several of these uh, examples, there is a, an assumption that there is a probability distribution, yeah. right? Yeah. That you know and that the demon is using to decide what the human next step will be. Right? Yeah. So I wonder if there's a universal relaxation process mm. from the demon not having no information about the probability distribution to actually knowing about the probability distribution. And yeah. You know, if there's a bound, or I don't even know if it would be interesting, or if there exists such a universal bound mm. on the relaxation process by which the human acquires the information in the probability distribution. Okay, so when the demon doesn't know the distribution, so yeah, that that's a difficult problem. So to to design the a good performance of Max's demo, typically we need to know the probability distribution beforehand. So if we don't know that, I'm not sure. So, but I, I think one approach could be based on the Kolmogorov complexity. It's a it's a kind of algorithmic complexity without relying re relying on the uh, probability distribution. So yeah, actually a long time ago Zurek wrote some papers about the algorithm complexity and some dynamics. So, uh, Zurek. Zurek. Oh, Zurek. Zurek. Uh, Zurek, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not so familiar with that Kolmogorov complexity, but th that can be an alternative approach to Maxwell's demo. So without using the concept of probability distribution. I think John Busfield also has a bunch of papers on Maxwell demons and yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Also, David Wolpert is working on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just wonder how yeah. to integrate his YouTube. What's the name of YouTube channel? Ah, this Matsumoto. <laughs> uh, you mean his YouTube channel? You can search for it. <laughs> maybe it's only in Japanese, but maybe. Yeah. <laughs> in Japanese, it's Yobinori. It's, it's difficult to explain the menu. Uh, oh, I, I think I can show you it. <laughs> Yes, this. Yeah, this YouTube channel. So, yeah, <laughs> close to million. <laughs> yeah. There are many, yeah. I think the most viewed one is this, 20, 20 million. It's a, about relativity for junior high school students. <laughs> <laughs> It's only in Japanese, but so if you're interested in it. Oh, yes, right. <laughs> it's universal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Okay, so um, if okay, so I is it enough for you? I mean, okay. Uh, could you briefly explain why the transfer entropy gives us the weaker version of uh, weaker result compared with the information? Oh, uh, yeah. Transfer. That, that's simply because this. So the information flow gives a bound of the entropy production, and this also gives the entropy production, uh, the bound. And the bound is usually given by something like this. 
minus, sorry, minus this. So simply this is a because of that inequality. So when can we have the yeah. uh, tight uh, equality? Uh, oh, what kind of condition we oh, can? Th that condition is the sufficient statistics. In that case, so they are the same. So this gives a tight uh, row bound. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so in this case, the sufficient statistics about the past sequence. So only the latest value is important. Okay, so if you have no more questions, then let's thank the speaker again. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so this is the final ones today, so is there any announcement? Organizing. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. I think you, you, you can have a dinner at the cafeteria and <laughs> let's meet it on, on Monday. <laughs> <laughs>